Good morning, Thumper. Thumper is having the breakfast of champions, Lucky Charms with chocolate milk and gluten-free Oreos. How is it? Is it good? Nice. How was your hike yesterday? How was your Sobo hike yesterday? It was really good. It was six females hiking together all day. Nice. Woman power mm -hmm. to the max. They're hiking back out today, and y'all hiking on flat ground today, right? Yes. Are you excited? I think there's a um, thousand feet of elevation. Oh, nice. How long have y'all been? How long has it been since you hiked on a like a flat terrain for a while? Well, there's that one five mile section of flat and moist. Oh yeah. After that. Yeah. Before that. Before that was like Virginia. <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, it was quite. Oh yeah. That doesn't count because it's rocky flat. Good stuff. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm back on the Appalachian Trail. We just got dropped off by the Hostel of Maine. Great folks there. Had a great stay. Uh, definitely enjoyed my zero yesterday. And the sun is out today. The weather looks much better. So, so happy I took my zero and let the trail dry out. Hopefully a little bit. It's still pretty wet so far, but I'm hiking on a couple of miles of flat before I start climbing to Bigelow's. Uh, so pretty tough hiking day today, but if I can get through the Bigelow's, then um, the terrain is much better for a while. So super excited about that. Um, going to miss my family for a few days or for the whole time. I don't really know. Um, like I said, they're basically 17 miles ahead of me. They were about to shuttle out. They'll basically start about an hour and a half after me today. So don't forget ask me if I was going to be able to catch them. I said, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Just not sure. Maybe I'll see him at Shaw's Hostel. Maybe in the wilderness. I don't know. Just, you know, you never know how things are going to work out out here. So, Nightingale, you know, I'll miss her. We've been hiking together for quite a while. So, so yeah, enjoyed hanging out with them. We had breakfast this morning. And anyway, here I am, but hiking around some good people that are on the same track as I am today. So, Java and Goodwater, uh, Cool Hand and Scarface. So, they're really cool, cool people. A couple of couples. So, so anyway, we'll see how it goes. Ooh, let me try to climb down this. Everything's still muddy. It's been so rainy the last couple of days. So let me inch down this little slope, hopefully without falling. Definitely carrying a heavy pack because I got a bunch of food. I may possibly have to stop for food on like day three, but I'm not exactly sure yet. So we'll see. But either way, I'll get with you guys up the trail and let you know what's going on. Dick Brown's Bridge. Lovely. Yeah, like I said, beautiful day so far. It's supposed to be like mostly cloudy, I think, but it looks like we're getting mostly sunny at the moment. So maybe we'll get some good views up on the Bigelow's. So this is kind of interesting. I picked up a new bottle of Propel to use for my electrolytes bottle because my other one was getting pretty nasty. And check this out. There are three servings per container. A 12 ounce serving. And each serving has zero calories, but the container has 10 calories. I don't know how that can be because anything times zero is zero, right? Like. So if there were three servings at zero calories, that would still be zero calories, but somehow this bottle manages to have 10 calories. I meant to reach out to Gatorade. I think they're the makers of this and ask them, what's the dealio with that? Am I missing something? <laughs> Strange. Okay, just stopped for the first little pit stop. Had a slice of pizza and drink some water and drop the layer because I'm getting ready to start climbing. So that's what you do when you're about to start climbing. You drop some clothes and drop some water and food weight as much as you can, get a little bit of energy going. So I do have kind of a little bit of sad news I wanted to report. Um, this actually happened a couple of weeks ago, but I didn't put two and two and figure out what it was, but there was a hiker 
airlifted off of um, out of the whites a couple of weeks ago and turns out it was Speedway um, a friend I had made back at the 1500 mile marker uh, if you remember I met her at Nemo that day and some of her other friends at one of the state lines super cool girl um, Speedway was awesome but she basically just shattered her ankle in the whites she had to jump down off a rock or something I talked to her last night and um, yeah, she sent me pictures of her ankle with all the hardware in it. I mean, it was just, yeah, she just shattered it. She was like four miles from the road, so they had to, they basically had to come and rescue her um, with a helicopter, I think, and like fly her out. So, um, yeah, just best wishes to her. I think this was her second attempt at the hike, and she was killing it. Like, she was doing so good and making good miles. And then the dang whites, like I always said when I was hiking through there, like, it's, it was just about survival because it was just so tough and brutally hard. See, I totally, totally hate that for her, but maybe she'll get back out there one day and hopefully she'll heal up and everything. So if you're watching this Speedway, I uh, hope you get better soon and get healed up. And hope all of it turns out good. It was super nice meeting you. You were awesome. So, so yeah, definitely, definitely not good news there. Okay, it's time once again to play that familiar game of try to keep your feet dry. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm closing in on the horn, I think it's called. I'm not quite to the Bigelow's yet, the horn comes first. Well, peeps, not the best view so far. Definitely sucked in. Just stopped for lunch, making a shelter, or excuse me, a lean-to here in Maine. And now I'm hiking uphill again, of course, towards, I believe, the Horn, South Horn, something like that. Still not quite to the Bigelow's yet. And the weather's still not cleared off, but looks like it's got a possibility that some might burn off later. We shall see. It's about, currently about 1230, I think. Okay, just got some good, kind of good news, actually. Um, I won't beat the dead horse. <laughs> That's why I haven't been telling y'all. Yeah, I've been having toe problems again. Um, and I think it's shoe-related this time, just because I think I've loved the... Uh, y'all know I switched the Olympus 5, and they've been great, but I think the whites just killed them. Like, they're not even quite to 400 miles yet. So I was hoping they go the distance, but, like, I can just tell the cushion is, like, just about gone. But, like I said, it's... I mean, basically, that's almost 400 miles of nothing but rocks, which is probably equal to six or 700 miles on normal terrain. So, so anyway, but I uh, was trying to order them from Alter and get them sent to Shaw's Hostel, where I'm going to be staying this weekend when I get there um, in Monson, but they were not showing the addresses working. So anyway, I called Shaw's, and turns out they sell shoes and actually had the exact shoe I was looking for, even in a size 15. So, so that was super cool. I just got off the phone with Hippie Chick, so she's going to hold them for me, so... Yeah, looking forward to staying there. It's like one of, if not maybe the most famous hostel on the trail, especially because of its location. It's right before the 100 mile wilderness. It's basically the last hostel before Katahdin. So it's very popular. And then for Sobos, it's kind of their first stop. It's kind of their needles gap, I guess, to get their gear and stuff right. So yeah, they, they carry a lot of stuff apparently at the hostel. So yeah, kind of surprised by that. That's awesome though. <laughs> She's like, we sell shoes. And I was like, yeah, but you don't have my size, though. And she was like, well, I'll check. We have some big ones. And sure enough, sure enough, she found one for me. So super good news there. So that's one thing I don't have to worry about. So at least I'll have new shoes this weekend because I need them desperately. My toes are in rough shape. Um, like I said, I think it's just a lack of cushion, especially since I noticed when I first wore the fives like I went like a whole week or two with no problems at all which was which is unusual I'm usually having to kind of deal with it so probably my fault in hindsight I probably should have got them taken off at some point but my toenails that is so well you know that's not a fun thing to do either so I just didn't want to get off trail for a few days to do that or anything so so anyway I'm going to 
grinning Barrett or crying Barrett or whatever. So, <laughs> thankfully, once I get through the big lows, I got hopefully some flatter, softer terrain until I get to Monson. So, so that'll be good. So, anyway, some kind of good news there. So, that's a plus. So, hiking along. Um, I think I'm going to try to camp. It's already going to get late in the day already. So, I don't think I can make. I didn't think I'd be able to. The All the ladies that did the slap pack yesterday, it was 17 miles and it took them like till like 8.30 last night to get back. So I didn't think I'd be able to do it with a full pack, but I was hopeful. So there's another campsite about 0.3 off trail. It's got a couple of tent platforms. So I'm going to probably try to stop there. And it'll be after all the big mountains. So I'll have all the climbing done really. And then just kind of got to wait out the rain tonight. It's going to be pouring. So I'm going to try to get on a platform, get my tent set up really good so it doesn't leak. <laughs> get rain in it like it did the other night. So, um, And like I said, I may, may just wait it out a little bit in the morning. Hopefully it'll get out a little bit sooner than they're saying. But as of right now, it's supposed to rain pretty heavy till about noon. So I don't want to lay in my tent till about noon. But I also don't want to hike in a thunderstorm or heavy rain either. It's just not fun and not easy. Um so anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Got to make progress somehow. So anyway, we'll keep on going down the trail. And the sun is kind of maybe burning some stuff off. So maybe when I get to the Bigelow's up here soon, I'll be able to get you some some good views there, hopefully. All right, I'm coming up towards the west peak of the Bigelow's. Supposed to be like maybe literally one of the best views in all of Maine, but it remains to be seen. How the view will be, it doesn't still kind of cloudy, but it's some blue sky, so I think, I think we're gonna get lucky on this one. I think we're gonna have some views. Not even quite to the view yet, or to the peak, but already getting a nice view. At least to one side. The other side is very cloudy, <laughs> as you can see. Basically, the clouds sitting right on top of us. We have beautiful sights over there. And here's the peak where I'm headed. Right up there. Definitely a better day than yesterday, that's for sure. So, thankful I waited. Bit and let you see the fall colors in Maine. Very, very cool. people the other side of the view is opening up and look at all the water amazing and the clouds just a beautiful beautiful setting 
Okay, I'm leaving the West Bigelow Peak and hiking towards the Avery Peak. It is right over there. Should have a nice view over there too. Maybe more will be cleared out. I'm looking for something special to the northeast, but I've not been able to spot it yet. But maybe once I get over there, I can find it. I'm hopeful. Maybe I don't deserve it yet though. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I guess the clouds will tell. Yeah, just incredible. Maybe the best view I've had of the whole trail. Like, I know I say that a lot, but I mean, just the lakes, the water is just incredible. Peeps. What I teased earlier was a possibility of being able to see Mount Katahdin from Avery Peak here, but I don't think I can see it just because of all these clouds. But it's over there somewhere. The final destination of the Appalachian Trail. Hidden from view. It's pretty cold and I gotta get to camp or I'd stick around and maybe try to see it, but I think I'll keep moving on. It's an incredible view though, so spectacular. Less than 30 degrees and 50 mile an hour wind. Oh, I bet it could get bad. Okay, Pete, less than two miles from camp. Of note is I have just climbed the last 4,000 footer in Maine before Mount Katahdin. So this is kind of the gateway. The big ones are kind of the gateway. There's a, a guy in front of me kind of said, that makes sense. Like, a little bit of easier hiking coming up. Thank goodness we need it. Like my shoes are fried, my knees are fried, my toes are fried. <laughs> if Nightingale was here, she would say her soul is fried. <laughs> it's been tough, like very tough. But I mean, it's a long, it's a long journey, so it shouldn't be unexpected. That we're all in pretty rough shape at this point. Over 2,000 miles in to the 2,194.3 mile journey yeah I'm gonna try to slow poke it here to camp it's about probably about 1.8 from here and it's pretty much it literally is all downhill <laughs> so it's which is not good like early in the hike in Georgia North Carolina everybody's like oh how many climbs are there today but you get up here like it's just like how many downs are there today because they're so tough on your knees and stuff but this one doesn't seem too bad so far got a little spot here I gotta go down but you yeah, know still some nice views so let me keep on trudging northbound and I'll get back with y'all down the trail. Hadn't seen a snake in a while, but there is one right there in Maine, of all places. Yikes, I am having a serious flashback to my Hoosick Notch, but thankfully, the trail's over here. Whew, that was a close one.
Okay, I'm on the Blue Blaze Trail to the campsite, and it's quite interesting. It's a little bit Mahusik Notch like, but I think I can fit through here, hopefully. Because I really want to camp here because it's getting dark. Ooh. Okay, all right, I made it. Ooh. Ooh, everything's tough in Maine, even the side trails. <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay, peeps. Got my tent set up on the platform. Hopefully it'll work. Uh, I'm going to have some rain, so it might be in there for a little while in the morning, too. But I think it will. So I'm going to go get some water. On down a ways here. Pretty cool little camp area. Lots of little squirrels and creatures running around. I have to watch the food close. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap this episode up. I'm on my way to get some water. Uh, like I said, I may have to camp here a little bit in the morning based on the weather. Uh, looks like it's going to be pouring, pouring, like early in the morning. So I may have to wait it out for a couple hours and maybe get a late start. But you never know. It's hard to tell about the weather around here. It seems to be pretty unpredictable at times. So maybe it won't rain at all. Or maybe it'll rain for four days. You just never know. So... Anyway, appreciate you watching. I am at the something campsite off that place and trail somewhere. <laughs> oh my gosh. I did complete the final 4K before Katahdin today. So that is cool. I'm glad of that. Like, I'm so sick of the downs. Like, everybody is. Like, everybody is just beaten up, battered, and bruised. And I think most everybody at this point is ready to get to the end. So. It is what it is. It's a long journey. So, anyway, I appreciate you watching as always. Like and subscribe to watch the final few videos. I don't know how many there'll be. Maybe 14 or 15, 16 more. I don't know. Something like that. Until I get to Katahdin. We shall see. But, as always, appreciate you guys. So, I will get back with you in the morning. Peace out.